A weird and interesting question popped itself into my brain the other day when I was playing on my Vita. Is the Vita Sony's Nintendo Switch? Or certainly could it have been Sony's version of the Nintendo Switch? Um, and I'll come on to that and why that is the case. I mean, the Vita is a lovely little um, handheld. It's got a cracking screen. I've got the original version with the OLED screen, which is absolutely brilliant. And it had lots of functionality on it with touch screens, both uh, front and rear um, you know, movement sensors. It's a cracking little piece of hardware. Could it have been the Nintendo Switch for the PlayStation? But I say I, I want to put some context around that, for instance, because Sony does have a history with handhelds. They came out with the PlayStation Portable. And their history is a little bit patchy, to be honest. Um, I like my PSP. Uh, I actually traded in my, not my Nintendo um, Game Boy Advance for my PSP. Uh, and it had that lovely screen and it felt good in your hands. Um, but it never really found its feet or its potential. Um, it wasn't very well supported and one of the key ingredients of any games console of any description, it just didn't have the games on it. I mean, there were some great games, uh, Lumines, Patapon, um, Loco Rocal, Final, Fa Final Fantasy Crisis Core, which I really loved, and Valkyria Chronicles 2, which although not as hugely brilliant as the original on PS3, um, was a cracking game. It also had some bigger titles, you know, it had a Tekken on it, it had Killzone on it, and also there was um, a version of the PlayStation 3's, um, no, PlayStation 2, sorry, it's SSX on tour. But in the main, the games were a little bit thin on the ground, and it just eventually just drifted off into obscurity. I still have my PSP, I was playing Valkyria Chronicles 2 on it just the other day for a little bit of a reminder. Um, and then we were all quite surprised as a result when the Vita came out. Because it was, I mean, it had a weird name anyway, um, but the launch wasn't great. It didn't have a huge amount of games on it. The internal storage was a big issue. The internal storage was, was I can't remember whether it was very small or non-existent, but you had to buy a very, very expensive uh, bespoke memory storage card for it, which put a lot of people off because, you know, they were like 30, 40 quid to buy these cards, even for, you know, just a two gigabyte one. And there was no ability to buy a cheaper, um, you know, non-Sony version of it. It was bespoke. So a lot of people felt that was a little bit unfair in many respects. But the games didn't really do it justice. I mean, there was Uncharted Golden Abyss, which was a really good uh, um Uncharted game, Gravity Rush, really colourful, lovely and innovative. But the most telling thing about my Vita is the game I actually put the majority of time into was a really hilarious game called Frobisher Says, which is a free download party game thing that used really innovatively the different touch screens and the, the, the different elements, including the camera of the, um, of the PlayStation Vita. I don't really spend much time on it. I played Persona Golden 4 on it. Um, and um, what else? Oh, the Tearaway I had as well, and I played a little bit of the uh, Little Big Planet, and they were great fun, but they weren't dragging me to the the Vita. They weren't drawing me away from the, the PlayStation Four to to play games on the go. It gets gathers dust for long periods of time before I come back and play on it for a little while. For instance, Dragon Quest Builders, I'm quite liking at the moment, and I think they just didn't know what to do with it. Um, it was promising, it was great, it looked lovely, but Sony didn't know what to do with it. And potentially because it was too powerful. What Sony tried to do with a PSP was to put a PlayStation 2 in your pocket. What they tried to do with a Vita was put a PlayStation 3 in your pocket. Did we really need that? Nintendo have never tried to do high-end handholds. Even if you look at the Switch now, if you take it off its docking centre and play it, graphically it's not brilliant. Even when you've got it docked, it isn't a patch uh, in terms of graphical fidelity to the PlayStation or the Xbox. But they never worried about that because what they had were games. Games, 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 games. You know, the um, the Wii, although not a handheld, was, was very innovative, lower quality graphics, but sold a truckload. Um, the Game Boy Advance, the Nintendo DS, uh, all of these things, they weren't pushing the best graphics out there, but they were innovative, but most importantly, had the games. And because the PSP and the Vita were aimed to be consoles in your hand rather than actually giving them their own identity as a, a, a handheld console on their own right. They were too expensive, they were too powerful, people didn't want to develop for them because it took too long, so therefore we had this, this portacy, um, paucity of games. It's frustrating thing, really, that Sony did this because 
they essentially invented the Nintendo Switch three years before Nintendo and they just didn't tell anyone about it. And that's that's what I'm coming to now. That is that's what I suddenly occurred to me when I was playing a particular game. In fact, the game that's playing in the background, Rainbow Skies at the moment, uh, a lovely little um, RPG sequel to Rainbow Moon, uh, turn-based um, strategy RPG, my favourite genre anyway. Uh, and I was playing this and it suddenly occurred to me that I was essentially playing a Nintendo Switch on a PlayStation. And uh, I say, I'll come to that in a second. But the Vita was a promising handheld that failed because Sony really didn't know what to do with it. So when the Vita was launched, it was a, a handheld, and they tried to revitalize it when the PlayStation 4 came out with some of the functions, you know, using it as a, a second screen, for instance. Um, or, you know, one of the things I actually used it for was uh, as a keyboard when I was playing Final Fantasy XIV, so you use a keyboard for MMOs. They tried to get that as something that was, was cool and innovative, but actually it wasn't implemented very well because it was going to be used by a very small number of people. Was there really any incentive for developers to build that kind of functionality into the, into the games? Uh, and the answer to that was no, that died a death. It did not work. However, there is one thing that the Vita does incredibly well, which is cross-buy, cross-save. Currently, with Rainbow Skies, I bought it once. I downloaded it onto my PlayStation 4. I downloaded it onto my Vita. And now I can play it on my Vita, upload that save to the server, and then go to my PlayStation 4 and play it on the PlayStation 4. Cross-play, cross-buy has been there longer than the Nintendo Switch. This play your games anywhere mantra has been something that, that Sony's had in its pocket. You know, the fact that I can be on the train and I can play Rainbow Skies upload it to a server and then when I'm home pick up where I left off on the train is exactly play anywhere mentality that that has happened with Nintendo Switch. Now Nintendo Switch the mechanics are very easy because you just pick up the Switch from its docking station move away and play it but that was always there and I've used it quite a bit. I've played um, Steam World Heist, Darkest Dungeon, Rainbow Moon, Rainbow Skies and I think this is where Sony really Mr. Trick, you buy one copy and then you can play it anywhere. So did Sony have the opportunity to beat Nintendo Switch to the punch? Well, I think kind of they might have done. Now the, the Vita was there, if they'd been a little bit more innovative in terms of how this all came together, then actually perhaps they could have cornered that market if they'd marketed it. The remote play function as well is great. I'm often on my Vita or on my Sony tablet um, streaming my PlayStation 4 directly there. You know, my wife might be downstairs watching something on the telly that I don't want to watch, so I'll pop upstairs, I'll pair a, a PlayStation 4 controller to my tablet or pick up my Vita and I'm playing God of War, Minecraft, whatever it might be, on my tablet upstairs. It works really, really well. This functionality has been there, but it's never been pushed by Sony. At the moment, my Vita is a repository for my old PS1 games that I really like. You know, it's got Final Fantasies on it, it's got um, Breath of Fire 3. It's basically all my old PlayStation 1 JRPGs now sit on my Vita, which is great, but at the same time, poor Vita. It's so much better than a place to put PlayStation 1 games. I really do cherish my Vita. I play it quite a lot. Also, a lot of people complained about how big it was. I have massive hands. I'm a big lad, um, so it fits quite beautifully in my hands. It has that exquisite OLED screen if you picked up one of the originals. And the cross-save is, is simple, um, and it's kind of made my Vita relevant again. I've been playing Rainbow Skies, and I've been swapping between the two systems. It's, you know, it's really, really good. Um, even games like Final Fantasy X, although you have to buy it twice, which is a shame, does support the cross-save function. Um, so could Vita have been Sony's Nintendo Switch with the right games of marketing? Possibly. The thing is, we're never going to know. That poor little Vita is going to be gathering dust in most people's collections. And all I'm going to have to do is to wipe the occasional tear away from my gloriously vivid OLED screen as I dream of what might, what might have been. You know, a promising handheld that didn't work because Sony didn't know what to do with it. But actually, if they'd figured out early, they had their own version of the Nintendo Switch, which if they pushed it, would have been absolutely great. 
It'd be interesting to know what you think about that. It's just a thought that popped into my head when I was playing, playing Rainbow Skies the other day. So I would love to know what you think. Um, thanks very much for watching. If you'd like the video, give it a like. If you think other people might like it, give it a share. Uh, and the subscribe button should be popping up on the screen right now. So please click that if you'd like to see more of my content. Thanks very much for watching. Have a fabulous gaming week and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye for now.